Good day here. Uh, what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about the uh, mass surveillance that's going on so that you have a good idea what you're really facing in the real world. Uh, and that's coming from my, it originally started in, in uh, the United States, now it's spread around the world. Many countries now adopting this kind of procedure of doing mass surveillance and mass collection of data on everybody in their countries and, the, and the, on the planet, really. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's, this is one of the main reasons I left NSA in 2001, because uh, I found out they were using the programs that I had developed for them internally to focus on uh, bad people. That is, we designed ways and means of figuring out uh, using metadata, looking at the fiber optic flows, and being able to pull out based on uh, IP systems and phone numbers and various other MAC numbers and attributes like that. We could see all of the data as it's flowing by and be able to pull out what was relevant to terrorist groups or criminal activity or governments or leaders or <laughs> various other people in the world. Uh, but they were, <coughs> they were uh, basically targeting groups of individuals uh, doing, doing things that were threatening, not, not individuals per se. Now, after 9-11, that's what uh, uh, Dick Cheney basically was, who was driving this, uh, took the entire intelligence organization, said collect everything on the planet and go against everybody, starting with U.S. citizens. Uh, and so internally in NSA, they started collecting uh, content and metadata on every U.S. citizen uh, in the country. Uh, and that's when I recognized that that, that was a direct violation of uh, virtually all the Bill of Rights in our Constitution, and so I fundamentally had to leave. I couldn't be a part of that, and that's why I left it. Uh, and these, this is a diagram of some of the, uh, some of the programs that I left them with. Uh, basically, the Marina Mainway programs on the, on the right side of, your, of the screen there index the data with metadata, and then it goes down into the content, which is in the pinwheel program for the internet or the nucleon program for uh, voice. Then that, that, those indexes allow them to pull data directly out and, and analyze it. And then if you look on the left side, you can see the FBI and CIA. Those are going directly through the FBI unit in uh, Quantico, Virginia, the DTU up there, and the, going directly into these databases with no attempt at oversight of this at all. This is a marriage of the uh, police with the uh, secret intelligence organizations. That means we now have a secret police, a Gestapo, and that's fundamentally what's going on. In the U.S., they're using it basically for criminal activity, and they've used it against pol politicians, other, other political organizations, and uh, also news reporters, Jim Rise and Jim Rose and the Associated Press and so on. And it's really, uh, it's really uh, destroying our democracy. And that's one of the reasons I left. And so this is how they do it. They, they have a cable program. They first go to the corporations that run the fiber lines to get access to the fibers around the world. And they've got uh, hundreds of taps around the world, uh, most of which I've been able to Google and find. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got most of them <laughs> laid out. But uh, <coughs> uh, if they can't get cooperation for the, from the corporations, they go to the local governments. They're uh, corresponding organizations like the BND or... Uh, the DDRS or the DDIS now and the NIS and uh, GCHQ and they get those organizations to approach uh, the, their, their local corporations inside their countries and then go up, get cooperation that way. And if, the, if that fails, if they don't get either the corporations or the governments to, uh, to uh, cooperate with them to tap, the to tap the lines and take all the data, they unilaterally do it. All they have to do is have access to the cables anywhere and if they get it physical access, they can tap it. So. So if you don't cooperate, they're going to do it anyway. So, <laughs> And these are the kinds of corp corporations that are participating, and they build back doors into their systems and various other things. So and fundamentally, they're into every, every, uh, every device in the, in, the, in the world. That's one of the reasons they also stole all the, the uh, SIM cards, giving the uh, equivalency of uh, user ID with the access codes. That gives them billions of accesses around the world once those are installed in devices. So that then allows them to tap it directly into your devices as well as uh, the networks and uh, getting pen penetrating through firewalls and so on by either seeing zero-day errors built into fundamentally flaws in the software as a design or, or um, they, they have them build in backdoors or weaknesses so they can break in. Uh, and these are the countries that are participating. First party is U.S., the other second parties are the other uh, English-speaking countries. And then these are other third parties, these every, all the other countries that participate there, including Netherlands. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
uh, and that there's a fourth party. Those are the other, those are parties we have relationships that we don't want anybody to know about. And we, uh, we don't even want to admit that we have them. So there's more, more relations beyond this. But these are the fundamental ones. And then this is the access platforms they use. Uh, they've got satellite collection, you know, uh, cooperation with other parties, taps on the fiber lines. And one is the, if you look at the little yellow dots around the world there, those are what uh, computer network exploitation programs. They're fundamentally hardware and software that's implanted in, in switches and servers around the world uh, that allows them to control those switches and servers. Uh, if they want to duplicate data that's passing through the switch or data, drain the data off the servers, they can do that uh, remotely. And so uh, it's fundamentally a tap on the entire world. They, f they basically own the network. So, uh, and then uh, the whole objective is to be able to to first of all lay, laying out on the ge geography of the world, uh, they lay out the physical network that is all the fiber lines and all the cables and all the satellites and microwave towers and, uh, and then map the, uh, the data that's being uh, used to transport like the IP numbering schemes or the phone numbering schemes that allow them to transport data across those networks to individual devices and they want to track those devices every minute of every day. So the whole idea is to, my estimate now, is they want to want to be able to know where about 4 billion people are in the world every minute of every day. That's fundamentally what this treasure map program, uh, you can Google this on the web and go read a bit more about it, uh, but that's the whole idea to map it to attributes of uh, devices that then map to the people so they can map people. One of the, one of the programs they want to use to, to, to uh, uh, with this in combination is that if they have a video of you anywhere in the world and they know that where you are within a, a foot uh, and they can find the video to match up for a couple of those uh, events, then they can match your face off that video, what face is in common at those times in that spot, and then that maps that face to you. And so they can now map the video to you too. So it's a matter of uh, doing that. Also, it's a matter of software. It's not doesn't take a lot of people to do that. But this is the, this is the whole idea of there. It's fundamentally getting back to population control. And this is the big elephant in the room that nobody's really talking about. The fundamental problem though is that once they do this, they have pulled together so much data on so many people in the planet and, and then they have tasks to try to, they, they say they're doing it for terrorism, but when you do this and you dump this on all your analysts, you can't, they can't figure out what, what they've got. They can't see the threat in the data because there's just too much data to go through. And so that's why they're continuously failing. So they, they, can't, uh, they cannot see uh, the threat coming because they can't get to the data that's relevant. Uh, that was the basic problem I saw back in the 1990s and that's the problem that uh, we developed a program internally in NSA to do, but they distorted that and, uh, and removed the protections that were built in so that they could do the collection on everybody. So. That's fundamentally what uh, I am trying to stop at this time. I'm working with coalitions in the U.S. government uh, and also NGOs, uh, privacy and civil liberties groups in the U.S. Uh, to try, to, and we have a coalition of about 50 members of Congress to help us uh, uh, stop this. After all, it was the U.S. that started it. I think we have the responsibility to try to stop it. So that's, our, our, our whole point was that uh, they shouldn't be looking at individuals. They should be doing a job, a professional disciplined job of focusing on those people who are doing uh, criminal things or threats to the other people in the world. And they, they need to focus and do a professional job on that and not collect data on everybody else in the planet and certainly not store it. Uh, because right now what they're doing is they're planning a new storage facility. The one they built in Utah, they're planning that's gonna be full in about four years. So in four years, they plan to have a new one opening that's about three times the size of Utah that's being built. They broke ground for it last summer, or this summer, and, uh, uh, and they plan to have that one ready in, a, in about four years. So that my thinking is that by that time, uh, Utah will be full of data on everybody in the planet, and they have this new one that's three times the size. It has to get bigger because there's more data being passed around the world, and if you're concept like theirs is, is to collect everything and store it so they can retroactively analyze it, uh, then you have to keep building bigger and bigger storage facilities and that's exactly what they're doing. So this is fundamentally the, the what I call the metastasizing malignancy that's being spread around and destroying the democracies of the world. 
because they're also using this data for uh, criminal activity and criminal prosecution, not just in the U.S., but around the world through using the MLAT system, and that's destroying our entire judicial process around the world. This is the real elephant in the room. Thank you. Mr. Bini, thank you so much. Thank you. For sharing your story with us.